What is up, YouTube family? Hey Thank y'all for tuning back in. So one of you, one of you called us out and was like, oh, they haven't been back to Mr. Ballin. They didn't go back. He scared them. He ran them off. They not reacting to him no more. Get, hold on. Slow down now. We only did like six videos. We back. Oh, you're right. We back now. Now we going back to Mr. Ballin because you said it. We here now. So I don't want to hear no complaining. In the fall of 2004, an undercover police officer in Texas was standing in line inside of a fast food restaurant when he turned around to scan the room. Now, he acted like he was just kind of nonchalantly looking around, kind of people watching, the way people do when they're waiting in lines, but he really wasn't doing that. In reality, what he was doing was taking a quick glimpse of two people eating by the window inside of this restaurant that he had been following all day that day. But when he took this quick glimpse of these two people, he noticed something totally bizarre that he had not caught earlier in the day. And as soon as he saw it, the hairs in the back of his neck stood up and almost unconsciously he reached down and put his hand on his concealed gun underneath Why? his shirt and then he tapped his partner who was also undercover right next to him and then the two of them walked straight over to the two people. On the evening of June 17, 2004, a 21-year-old woman named Molly Daniels pulled into the driveway of her little home that she shared with her husband and two kids in suburban Texas. It had been a long day for Molly at the home remodeling business where she worked as a receptionist, and so now that she was home, the last thing she wanted to do was go inside and make dinner for her family. And so, after turning off her car, Molly just sat there in the driveway for a couple of minutes, just zoned out looking out the window, but eventually she kind of snapped out of it, she gathered up her things, she got out of the car, and she made her way up to the front door. And as soon as she stepped into her home, that bad mood she was feeling from work was wiped away and replaced with happiness. Okay. Because the first thing she heard the second she was in her home was the sound of her four-year-old son, Caleb, hysterically laughing. And so Molly walked into the back room and she found her son, along with her husband, Clay, rolling around on the ground, tickling each other. And next to them was their one-year-old daughter sitting on the rug, laughing as well and clapping and watching okay. along. And so as soon as Molly walked into the room, Clay, who was underneath Caleb, stopped for a second and grinned up at Molly. Molly smiled back. And then Clay and Caleb went back to wrestling and the one-year-old continued to laugh and play I'm along. So and so Molly suddenly felt so content with her life. It was so incredible to have a family of her own. And so with a big smile on her face now, she headed off into the kitchen to make dinner. Her mood switched quick. You know, she wasn't fine. We didn't want to make no dinner. I'm off work. And then went to, you know, that, that moment with the children and father. I'm just brought her nervous. back to life because the beginning, you know, he got you with the cliffhanger. He got you with the eating at the table, blah yeah, blah. Yeah, now yeah, I'm all, yeah. I'm already knowing something about to get crazy. Now we got children in here. We got children. I don't, I don't like, like when kids involved. I don't like it either. That's why y'all be talking that crap about coming back to Mr. Ballin because y'all want to come back over here to this. Leave the kids alone. I hope the kids ain't involved in none of this. Mm -hmm. Not involved, but you know, victims. I get it. Crime. I get. I get what you're throwing. They'd be, they be, they be skeptical in the comment section. I'm telling you, you to watch them. They'd come call me out for something like that. Life had been tough financially for the Daniels family recently. The city where they lived, called Leander, was located just north of Austin, Texas, and it was getting more and more expensive every single year. Clay, who was two years older than Molly, he was 23, he was a mechanic, but he had been out of work for months, and so he had just been staying home with the kids. As for Molly, she had her job as a receptionist, but it paid very little, and so ultimately the family was just barely scraping by. But despite the financial hardship they were under, Molly was so thankful that she had a husband in Clay that was so good with their kids, especially Caleb, the four-year-old son, because Caleb was actually Molly's son from a previous relationship, and she was worried that maybe Clay wouldn't necessarily treat him like his own, mm. but Clay had totally stepped up to the plate and become Caleb's father, and Caleb definitely viewed Clay as his dad. Okay. And so that relationship was as close as if they were biologically related. And so Molly just felt so grateful for that. That evening, the family sat down and had dinner together, and then afterwards, Molly and Clay got the kids off to bed, and then Molly and Clay stayed up and watched TV together. But after a while, Molly said she was tired and she was gonna go to bed. Clay said he'd be staying up for a bit longer. And so the couple kissed, said goodnight, and Molly made her way upstairs. At around 10.45 p.m. that night, so about 15 minutes after Molly went upstairs, 
She was laying in bed, drifting off to sleep, when she heard the sound of their front door open and then shut, and then she heard the sound of their car being turned on and leaving the driveway. Now, this was not a big deal for Molly because earlier that night, Clay had mentioned kind of offhandedly that he wanted to go see his mom that night, that he might swing over there and say hello. He had a couple of paperback books that he wanted to give her. And so paperback Molly books. knew there was a chance he could be doing that. Paperback and so she assumed books. that had to be what she was hearing. And so she forgot about it and fell asleep. Wait a minute. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm getting this, these facts. They went to bed around 10, 10 something, right? Mm -hmm. He 10, stayed 15, He stayed down there. At 10.15, she heard a door open and close and the car start and leave. Who going to their mama house to drop them off a paperback book at 10.15 at night? That's what I don't get. It ain't that important. You can wait till the next morning. This ain't, it ain't already ain't adding up. Who You're not going to get a late fee. Fellas, leave your house. If you if you marry, I'm talking to my married people. We ain't talking to y'all none shacking up. You know what I'm saying? We ain't talking to none of y'all uh, playing house people. Um, leave the house at ten fifteen. They go drop your mom off. Even if I'm book. not married to you, you leave the house at ten fifteen. You ain't coming back in this house. Ten fifteen. You leave the house at ten fifteen and go drop off. That means you ain't staying here. So bye. You ain't gonna drop off no damn book. You ain't gonna go drop off no damn book to your mom at ten fifteen. My mom gonna be in the bed at nine thirty. She ain't getting no book until ten fifteen. And fell asleep. The next morning, when Molly woke up at 6 a.m., she Kids rolled over and she saw Clay was not in bed with her. Now, she wasn't immediately alarmed by this because it wasn't unusual for Clay to get up really early. And so Molly climbed out of bed, she made her way over to the window, and she looked down at the driveway, expecting to see their car back, meaning Clay would be downstairs somewhere. Meaning but she looked in the driveway, there was no car. And so suddenly feeling kind of panicked, Molly went downstairs and looked around the house. Clay wasn't there. And so she There's picked the up the phone and she called Clay's mother. And when Clay's mother picked up, Molly said, hey, is Clay with you? He said he was stopping by last night. I heard him leave. Is he with you? And Clay's mother would say, no, he's not here. And in fact, I didn't even know he was going to be stopping by last night. I haven't heard from him. The drive from Molly and Clay's house to Clay's mother's house was 40 miles of twisting, fairly dangerous 40 miles? Time. Now, Clay regularly made this trip to and from his mother's house, and so Molly was never that a worried about guy. him going on this 40-mile stretch. But suddenly, without saying it, both Molly and Clay's mother were thinking the same thing. Did Clay get into a car accident last night on the drive to his mother's house? Mm -hmm. And so at some point, Clay's mom on the phone tells Molly to stay calm, stay at the house with your kids. I'm gonna get in the car. I'm gonna drive the route that Clay would have taken back to you and we'll okay. see if we can find him. And then as soon as the two women hung up, Clay's mother ran to her car. She jumped inside, she turned it on, she peeled out of the driveway and began speeding those 40 miles back towards Clay and Molly's house. And she had only gotten about halfway along this trip when up ahead she saw all these flashing blue and white lights. She saw crime scene tape across the whole road. Oh, snap. This was a section of the highway that was heavily forested on either side. And she could see traffic was backed up very far on the other end and as well on her side. And so, of course, is Clay's Clay? mother is thinking, this is my son. He's been in an accident right here. Yeah. And so she pulls over to the side of the road. She throws it in park. She gets out and runs to the nearest police officer and begins frantically asking them, what's happened here? What's happened? And as she's talking to the officer, she notices behind him, there's all this smoke coming up from the forest. There's a fire down in the forest. And so she's craning her neck to look down and see what it is. And the officer tried to stop her, but finally she pushed past him and she looked and she saw there was a car on fire that clearly had flown off the road. And so okay. in a total panic, she begins asking the officer, do you know who it is? Is it my son? Is it Clay? The officer told her to please calm down. We have no idea whose car this is. We're trying to figure it out. The fire department hasn't even put the fire out yet. We don't know mm -hmm. enough to tell you anything. But at this point, Clay's mother could not wait any longer for answers. And so she turned around, she ran back to her car, she hopped in it, and she made her way around this big police barricade and sped the rest of the way to Clay and Molly's house. Wait, she left the scene? Yeah, because I mean, at that point, she really can't do She got to wait anyway. I mean, I feel like you can't see if it's his car. But you don't even know. If, no, heck no. They, it's an act of crime. They're not going to uh... let you see nothing. But I think is, I don't understand, like... Now that the mom is confirmed, like, and then the, the girlfriend, I guess, I don't, you know, confirm that, that this is a, a, a drive that he makes. My thing is, uh, like, why is he making his drive late? First of all, I go there again. Like, why are we driving? If it's a 40 mile drive to go see your mom that late to come back, like, how far is 40 I miles? feel like something in between how far is 40 miles? from us, yeah, probably our next city, like Delano or 
Oh, Sam. Like, yeah. So, you're talking Gorman. That's like 40 miles right there. Like, you're talking... Like halfway to L.A. You're talking this late driving to see your mom. And something ain't, paper pack. Something ain't adding up. Like, this trip. Something in this trip. Like, something For ain't paper adding. paperback book. Something off. Something real off. Where's the kids? Are they at the house? Yeah, I, think the, I don't think the kids went. Because the kids went upstairs first with the mom. After her. Or before her, and then she went. There, she picked up Molly. She drove her back. And when they got there, both women are totally hysterical, but they run right up to the police tape and they look down in the direction of where this fire had been, which now had been put out. There was just smoke coming off of this car frame that had been totally burned out. And immediately when Molly looked down there, she recognized the car, or I should say she recognized the shape of the car because the fire had totally mm. eviscerated the car. But Molly, she was seeing the frame was about the right size and she was seeing that strewn around this burned out car were all these paperback books that had been burned up partially in this fire. And she knew that Clay had likely been on his way to his mother's house with all these paperback books so inside Clay. of the vehicle. And so she knew this had to be Clay. And at the same time that Molly is having this horrible realization, the fire department down below was able to actually get into the burned out vehicle. They opened up the door and they found right away there was a body in the driver's seat. And so oh, between snap. the size of the body, all the paperback books that Molly said, you know, that would be something Clay would have, along with several other personal effects that were found inside of the car, like Clay's prized Harley Davidson pin that he always wore in his hat. It was obvious that this was Clay. When word spread about Clay's death, Molly's neighbors and friends in Leander jumped into action. People loved Molly in Leander. She was this very sweet, very kind woman who was a little bit socially awkward, but they had found ever since she had married Clay, she had really found some more confidence and just seemed happier. And so it was totally devastating to see Clay be pulled from her life like that. And so very quickly, the community in Leander raised $1,000 and they gave it to Molly and her kids. And then also neighbors began dropping off food and stocking their fridge with groceries. And even though Molly couldn't even eat, she was so grief stricken from the loss of Clay, she still very much appreciated the effort that people were making to comfort her. But as the community rallied around Molly and her kids to get them through this difficult time, the police were starting to ask some questions about how exactly this crash that had killed Clay actually happened. Because there were some oddities about the scene of the accident. What? The biggest being, there were no skid marks on the road, which meant Clay had not hit the brakes before swerving off the road and crashing down in the trees below. And secondly, they didn't really understand how the fire that had started after this crash had gotten so incredibly hot that it basically had completely melted away every part of the vehicle save for the frame. And also Clay's body had been totally destroyed. I mean, the authorities had seen fires after car accidents, but nothing like this. This, this looked so very unique. I don't even know and so investigators think. started to wonder if they were really dealing with a car accident or, or if this was a murder. I mean, at this point, I mean, you, now that you say do you no think mark, like, Do you think like they would both um, kill him for like insurance or something? Like the mom and the wife? Man, I mean, the stories that we didn't react to on the channel, I yeah. wouldn't put it past it. Like, I'm, not, but I'm thinking, like, that's their gonna, alibi to be like, I'm I called her and she said, I'm not even gonna throw the mom in there. I'm going off of the girl girlfriend because you know she was already set in the car, like messed up in her head, like she didn't want to go in there and cook, already toe up in the brains. And plus, you gotta think she went in there and what changed her mind was the kids. So she probably already had a plan to kill him, went through with it, like and now it's done. But now she gotta play the but, role of being hysterical but and all she that stuff. Needed an alibi so she's gonna yeah because he know he go all the time the yeah the mom yeah he go to the mom so the mom is in it no i don't think the mom in it i i, I, don't I think feel the mom like she is you're trying to add another suspect we gotta have one look, at a time one at look, a time she left the scene to go get molly to bring molly back i don't know i don't know and on june 22nd just four days after clay was found investigators would learn from the crime lab that their suspicions had been correct so who did something we did a merch drop last year and the gear was awesome. We were so happy with it, but the shipping times were ripping issues. If you're awesome, there's all of it come and that he had not fire had gotten.
it would turn out there was lighter fluid found all over the oh. front seat of the car, so that was the reason the fire had gotten so big. And then during the autopsy, Clay's lungs showed that he had not ever inhaled any soot, meaning he was dead when the fire started. Do you think maybe he committed suicide? No, because he inhaled it. I don't, no, I'm thinking it's... It, no, nah, this ain't gonna be no suicide. This is gonna be a murder. Uh. I'm saying it. like, cause it's gonna be a murder. It, I mean, I, I don't know. I I don't know like if it's a bad thing or not. But like, if you inhale but lighter fluid, inhale let's say you have none in his lungs. Oh. So this is somebody playing this. Like I said, that girlfriend. I'm telling you. But how? But you gotta think. How was he able to drive off the cliff? Like you, like he's you, on fire. So once you ignite it, when him sitting in it, he was soaking it in that seat. Whatever lit it on fire, mm. that's it. I mean, he, so maybe he like lit a cigarette and then boom, boom. And that's it. And so very likely, you think? Clay was murdered and the car accident was staged. And interestingly, when word started to get out in town that Damn. Clay's death seemed suspicious and that maybe he was murdered, it turned out nobody was surprised because even though Molly adored Clay and what? thought he was a great father, most other people in Leander hated him. He was known oh, snaps. to be this totally short-tempered guy who would just pick fights with people out of the blue. In fact, at Clay's own funeral, his literal best friend stood up to eulogize him. And during this, he said, I think honestly, the world is a better place without Clay. And so oh. investigators began looking into Clay's background to see That's if they could right. find connections with people that might have a grudge or some reason whole, to be mad at Clay town. who might want to do him harm. And very quickly, investigators found something. Just 10 days before Clay was found, he had pleaded guilty to sexually assaulting a seven-year-old girl. But the sentence he received was incredibly light. He was given 30 days in jail, which he had not served yet, and probation. Now, the father what? of the victim, the seven-year-old girl, was absolutely furious about Clay's light sentence. And in fact, just a couple of days before Clay died, the father threatened to kill Clay. So investigators quickly tracked down this father, and then they brought him in for questioning. But very quickly, this father made it clear to police that yes, he hated Clay. Yes, he, he had it. threatened to kill Clay, but no, he had nothing to do with what happened to Clay. Oh my God! See this. 30, like 30 days. This is like we talk about these stories that get they 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 start uh. off a little bit like okay, this is all right, you know, and then it just flips. Out of nowhere, every story just got this big flip. And the, the, the coming in with the case of a child. What if, like, what if Molly did it because she feels like as a husband, like, you did that to an innocent seven-year-old? How did he get 30 days? Where are they at? Where you just get a of... slap on the wrist for that? That is horrible. Somebody just brushing. Wow, that is so sad. Is, like, under the, just brushing it off? Like, oh, okay, cool, 30 days, bruh. Like, That's I wanted to Molly know. That's what I'm saying. What if it was Molly? What if she thought, oh, you're going to pay for this some way, somehow? Cause he had kids. Like, yeah, because he had kids. And I don't know. I'm just saying, like, who's to say she just felt like as a wife? Like, no. Is that why she felt like she didn't want to go in the house and cook? Like, what if he was an a-hole? Like, that's probably why she was like, I don't want to go in this house. Like, she took a moment before going in there. His own best friend said what he said. Man. And the father had an alibi to back that up. Okay. And so after confirming his alibi, the police somewhat reluctantly allowed the father to leave, even though to a lot of them, he just really seemed like the slam dunk primary suspect, but he couldn't have been. And so with him out of the picture, the police were kind of back to the drawing board. And so they decided they would actually go talk to Molly and see if maybe she could shed some light on who else might have wanted to hurt clay I feel like even if he did do it if he got a slap on the wrist for doing that to my daughter then sh i'm gonna get away with murder yeah but the way they work with that cop now like if you like they, they treat I'm it like just... a, i know what i'm saying i get what you're saying like i'm down for it too like yeah if you killed him he killed it but now the way that stuff worked like the cop they on the you the, the now you're the problem like they arrest you you do 100 years in jail if you end up it's like the case where that dude came in through the, the window and the, the dad like caught him messing with his daughter in the bed. he shot him because he shot him in the back going back out the window the dad got prosecuted for it. Like, it's, it's dumb how that shit worked. Like, it don't even make sense. Now, in their previous conversations with Molly, police found her to be incredibly polite and also at the same time, very, very upset about the death of her husband. But this okay. time, when investigators showed up at Molly's house and she brought them into her kitchen where they sat down to talk, it was like the police got a totally different Molly. And it happened as soon as they asked her, you know, hey, who do you think could have hurt your husband? 
It was like Molly suddenly became impatient. She didn't have time for these questions. And finally, she just said, you know what? I think Clay was depressed because he had that prison sentence that was coming up that he didn't want to serve. And so probably he just killed himself. I think that's what happened. And so now I need you guys to leave. And so the officers didn't make a fuss. They didn't fight Molly on this. They just got up, they left. But once they were back out in their car, they, they looked at each suspicious. other and they both agreed that Molly's behavior was very suspicious and it made them think, you know, maybe she actually yeah. knows more about what happened to Clay and she's kind of trying to cover it up and make the police go away. And over the next couple of weeks, as police began investigating Molly, they discovered quite a bit of evidence that made them even more suspicious of her. For one thing, there was Clay's $110,000 life insurance policy that Molly was entitled to, and Molly had apparently been calling the insurance company nearly nonstop mm. every day, trying to get them to right? wire that payment as soon as possible. And Molly apparently was telling people in town how excited she was about getting that money. Also, police Damn. learned Damn. after talking to Molly's neighbors I ain't that Molly. Molly was starting to date again already just three weeks after her husband well, has she's died. Me. She's out there on the dating scene, even bringing home one of her boyfriends and having him live with her two kids. Look, I, don't, I ain't agree with the boyfriend was moving right in already. Was I right? But I ain't mad at Molly. Was I right or was I right? Yeah, most people do it for insurance. But I called it immediately. I knew, I knew. But I Molly knew got reasons though. Even if Molly is guilty, no, yeah, that's Molly true. got reasons. Girls, it ain't like live with your it ain't that like, fast. It ain't like we out here just watching. Molly but then again, they can't really stay stuff. here and say that because she probably was already being unfaithful before he passed away. Yeah, he probably was being unnasty. You know what I'm saying? He out here doing what he was doing. How are you gonna take that in as a as a, a wife? Like your husband coming and saying, "Oh, I just got charged with touching a little girl." Like, my, take that in. Molly did what she had to do. Molly yeah, in a situation, exactly. she she bang bang. She said somebody gonna die, and and obviously it was Clay. Yeah. You can't be mad at Molly. Don't be mad at Molly for making a decision that a lot of y'all would have made. People be talking about what they would have did in certain situations. A lot of y'all in Molly's shoes is doing what Molly I did. Been like, Probably would have been a little bit cleaner. Lock me up because I did it. Yeah, because he got to go. I mean, could have been a little cleaner, I but you know what I'm saying? I mean, I what she did day. with the lighter fluid. I did it. You know what I'm saying? Can't be out here touching the kids. You got to go. And according to Molly's babysitter, this new boyfriend that was coming into the house was really upsetting Caleb, the four-year-old, who had been so close with Clay. The babysitter would say that Caleb, who normally was a very mellow out. child back when Clay was still alive, was now very violent and emotional, and periodically he would just stop, look up into the sky, and scream, I love you, daddy. But when the babysitter brought this up to Molly and said, really, you should get your son some help here, Molly got angry and said Caleb was fine, it was none of her business, and then she slammed the door on the babysitter. But Damn. despite how suspicious Molly now seemed, there wasn't any real evidence that actually linked her to Clay's death. And so finally, in the fall of 2004, so several months after Clay's death, and still the police have not figured out who Where killed him or how he died and how he wound up in this inferno by the side of the road, they decided to kind of reinvigorate this investigation into Molly. They really wanted to find evidence that she was involved in Clay's death. And so they decided to put a surveillance team on Molly 24 seven. And at first, the undercover police would report that Molly's behavior was incredibly routine. She basically did the same things every single day. She got up, she got the kids out the door, she went to work. Afterwards, she picked her kids up from the babysitter. She went home, she fed her kids, and then they all went to bed and they did it all again the next day. The only deviation from her schedule was periodically she would go out after work to run some errands, like go to the grocery store. But then on December 3rd, so six months after Clay was found, Molly would finally break her routine. On that day, Molly, on her way home from work, made a pit stop in this parking lot near several local stores. So she parked her car, she got out, but then instead of walking into one of these stores to run an errand she or something, she walked to a dark colored Mustang that was parked in the parking lot as well. And a guy was driving it. This guy the cop didn't recognize with dark hair. Molly walked up to him and began talking to this guy through the window. And then at some point, Molly began very suspiciously looking over her shoulder like she was trying to see if anyone was watching her. And then she walked around and climbed into the Mustang with this guy. She shut the door and then the two of them drove off together. And so the undercover police officer followed after them. And eventually the Mustang containing Molly and this guy pulled into the parking lot of a Taco Bell, a fast food restaurant. 
And so they stopped, they got out, and the undercover officer watched as the two of them casually walked inside of the Taco Bell, they ordered some food, and they sat down by the window to eat. And so by this point, the undercover officer, he's not seen anything incriminating happening here, but what he's seeing is such a break from her routine that it just seemed really suspicious and he wanted to go inside and have a look. And so he called for backup from another undercover officer who was part of the surveillance team. He came into the parking lot and then the two of them, these two officers who are wearing plain civilian clothes, they both got out of their unmarked vehicles and they casually walked into the Taco Bell and they got in line to order food. And as they were standing in line, one of the undercover officers casually turned part. around in line and very nonchalantly scanned the room. Like he was looking at nothing in particular. But in reality, what he was doing was taking a quick glimpse at Molly and this guy she was with. And when the officer took this quick glimpse, he noticed yeah. something very strange about the guy that Molly was sitting with. Something it's that the play. officer hadn't seen before, but now that he was up close, he could see it. And as soon as he saw this strange thing, the officer tapped on his partner's shoulder like, all right, we're doing something here. The officer reached down, put his hand on his concealed gun underneath his shirt, and then he walked across the restaurant, not even pretending to be undercover at this point. He's basically giving away that he's a cop. He strode right over to their table, and when he stopped in front of them, Molly and the guy she was with both looked up at him in surprise, and the officer just stared down at the guy. Not at Molly, just at the guy. The strange thing the officer had caught when he looked over at the guy was that he recognized him. This was someone he knew personally from being in law enforcement in the area. This guy was Clay Daniels. I told Molly's you. Molly's supposedly I dead told husband. You. I knew it. I freaking knew it. It they was Clay. The whole thing. I did not have no. I knew it. Oh, no, I'm talking about before the cop got in I knew it. You did I not got know it. Right. it. Not... I got it right. When did you. I got it right. When did you guess Don't Clay was alive? Try to take... When did you guess Clay was alive? When, when they got the Taco Bell. When I was putting the pieces together. Not when they when was, I was putting the you pieces like You had together. it 50 minutes into the thing. I just, ooh, I yeah, feel good. The whole, but I Clay's still good. a bad person, though. So technically, they got the check, and he bought that Mustang, changed his identity, and... Clay's still a bad person, though. Yeah, because he pretty much uh, dipped on doing the sentence. And he still got cases of not doing the, that geek shit. I just said that. Exactly, so he still should be burning gasoline. Or lighter fluid, whatever it so was. whose body was it? They didn't kill somebody else. I don't know. <sighs> whose body is it? Oh, and the mama was in on it? No, I don't know. I think so. This, I know she was. She she had to be. That's no, you can't mom. have too many people in on it. Somebody start snitching. Mm. You seen Survivor. For $100,000? You seen and Survivor. And they have financial. You see how they be acting on Survivor? They be snitching. Just clearly dyed his blonde hair black. black. It would turn out Molly and Clay had staged his death in order to keep him from having to serve that prison sentence wow, for the sexual so she was assault able to charge, him too. She deserved and to get so they could too. collect on the one hundred and ten thousand dollar life insurance wow. policy. The body that was found inside of the burned out car was obviously not Clay's. It was the body of an eighty one year old woman what? who Clay had dug up from some isolated cemetery, thrown inside of his vehicle, and then pushed his vehicle off the road and lit on fire with lighter fluid. And so that was why there was no skid marks up on the road because again, this was not a car accident it was staged and so after clay and molly staged clay's death it actually worked people really believed that clay no, no. had died they Wait. were questioning how he died but nobody really thought it wasn't clay so my thing is even though he deserves so much jail time and she does too because you're okay in what he did and it was not okay but was he at his own funeral did he hear what his best friend said no, I doubt it, because he, he, they would have noticed. Hair died or not, you're going to know. They're going to gonna get skeptical. You go to your own. And people. he could put it in the car, though. Look in the car? It. What are you going to do? In the car? Well, let's sit the funeral outside. Like, look at, you know how they do it in movies when they're like. See, that's your problem. He's in not, in, the, in the little, in the little no. pavement, and they're like looking at their nah. funeral. I mean, yeah, at the grave site, probably, yeah, you can do that. But, but what you do you think I'm hair. talking about? Yeah, you don't the talk. He's talking about, they were talking in the church. <sighs> you get a eulogy at the church. Oh. My bad. See, that's your problem. You started digging in the movies and stuff. <laughs> Get your brain back in the real life detective skills right now. We are in real detective mode right now. I've been saying the right things, okay? Plan was working, but after three weeks of being apart with Clay kind of hanging out by himself away from the town, mm -hmm. Clay and Molly just couldn't stand to be apart any longer. 
And so Clay dyed his blonde hair black. That was the only thing he did to disguise his identity. And then he just moved back into the home with Molly and the kids. That's what and I'm so just that say, was the new guys? boyfriend that neighbors were seeing Molly with. She was not actually going out on new dates. Yeah, she was bad. just back with Clay. And but Clay's stepson, Caleb, the four year old, he immediately recognized that his father was back, even though he had black hair. But Molly he and knew. Clay had convinced the little boy that Clay was not really Clay. Instead, so this was the new the boyfriend, Jake. This is very likely why Caleb had begun wow. acting out. He was old enough to understand that something wasn't right, yeah, but not old enough to understand that his parents were lying to him. Don't it's unclear why Molly think. and Clay, who lived together shamelessly, decided to have this weird rendezvous in the parking lot inside of Clay's Mustang and then go to Taco Bell and eat together. But regardless, it was this secret meetup that ultimately led to them getting caught. Wow. Molly and Clay were both charged with insurance fraud and they both pled guilty. Molly was sentenced to 20 years in prison Dang. and Clay was sentenced to 30 years in prison plus 20 more years for probation violations. Molly has since been paroled while Clay is still in jail. Molly out? Molly should still be in there. Molly should still be in there. The fact that for fraud... No second chance for that. For fraud, you get 30 years, but for doing what you do to a child, you get 30 days? Man, look at this. This turn sideways, bro. I'm my own hair at this point. But I was right. I called it, so pat myself oh on the my back. Oh, my God. You called it at the... the, the I right still did, but did you? Before. But did you? I wasn't looking for but that. I was looking for somebody to I get burned. It. I was focused on... I knew it. I called it. Yeah, they so... both still need to go... No, they both they are both part, do. part of all My that. thing is, like, nobody noticed that the guy was Clay. Like, I... I he dyed his hair. That's all he did. It's not like he had some extra... These type of crimes? No, nah, man. They didn't well, dug up somebody's But if you dyed your hair, I could still know it's you. They didn't dug up somebody's old body, burned her again, like, her bones and stuff. Then you got the kid involved. Like, it's a lot that plays in this. Like, this... Well, and, the then, and then your own kids? And then your mom. Like, so your, did the mom know no, about no, it? No, been... How you gonna mess with his mom like that? She yeah, you put your so mom through sad. that? You put your son through like that? That trauma? Like, it's so many, so much trauma in this story. Like, look, I'm... From, you know I mean? Y'all, guidelines, I ain't gonna say what I, y'all know, y'all know, a lot of y'all agree with what I'm saying, they, they deserve to be, they do, Carly, they do, and I can't believe she's paroled, yeah, like, cause, uh, ma'am, what, that, I crazy. just don't understand how nobody seen him, and he was living he in the same his hair house, like, like, he, they really was on some movie type stuff, like, dying hair, crap. I'm just saying, well, Bert, if you dye your hair, I still know what you look but like, but I'm talking about, this is not, like most, they swear that he like just did most some criminals are and stuff. most criminals are dumb. They tried some smart stuff here. They, <laughs> they really did. For a hundred and ten thousand. The dumbest thing they did was meeting up still afterwards. Yeah, they could have. They almost right. could have got away with it. Sadly, but once the DNA came back with the bones, though, they would have been in trouble. Like Molly would have to get up out of there. That 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 undercover cop knew like it's it's some she gonna she gonna mess up somewhere. She was getting too comfortable. That's why they thought they was on wow. something. They didn't watch some on wow. CSI or something. They don't watch some Lifetime. Something. They don't watch some Lifetime. Let us know. Y'all done dropped off another one. Mr. Baller well, came through clutch again. Let as us always. know. What's y'all opinion on this it. one? Be careful down there about y'all opinions. You know, community guidelines. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Want y'all getting suspended and nothing like that. Saying then you know. You watch how you word what you're talking about. Let us know what but, you guys uh, yeah, thought. Yeah, let us know what y'all y'all. Did you guys from the beginning? What did you guys think was the story in a sense? Like, where were you guys headed? Let us know where your little mind traveled first. This crazy first. man, y'all. That's why I take day. It ain't got nothing to do with who telling the story. It just it got to do with the story. You. I need a break sometimes from this messing up my brains, messing up my head and stuff. Man, I gotta go to practice my summer and I see little children walking around and stuff, and y'all telling stories like this. Little children in there playing. I'm not thinking of that. I'm just saying. They be having us watching stuff like this. Now I got to be aware of my surroundings. Weirdos and stuff.